By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match between a mono blue deck with Dan Dans. I'm so looking forward to this. I've called it Dan Dan Powerhouse because it's got Dan Dans and it's got a lot of power cards. It's being piloted by friend of the channel Redmar and he's taking on my Disco Troll deck. So I'm going to the Disco again with my trolls. I just love playing this uh, this black and red deck. It's a lot of fun. Now before I jump into the deck decks because I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always you can also choose to skip this section go straight to the matches instead the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps one of those timestamps reads mtg games click on mtg games and it'll take you straight to the matches and in that same description below you can also find more information about the rules in this case we are playing uh, swedish old school magic rules with an open reprint policy so if you're wondering what does that mean and you're interested in it check out the description below and in that same description below you can also find a link to the timmy talks patreon page and here you can see it on your screen so timmy talks has its very own patreon page where you can become a patron of the show and you can already be become a patron for just one dollar a month and with your money you're supporting me as a content creator so if you love what you see please consider becoming a patron. There are a lot of perks involved when you become a patron. For example, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord channel to meet up with all the other patrons of the channel. So if you're interested, check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And now that you are fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck text and I'm starting with the deck of my opponent, Redmar. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Redmar, so Dun Dun Power, and uh, he's actually called it Dun Dun Blue, not Dun Dun Power, but I hope you don't mind Redmar for kind of adding, changing your name a little, because I love the fact that you're playing Dun Duns in this, and of course you also have all the power cards, so hence the name Dun Dun Power. Uh, when we're looking at the list, we're actually seeing quite a lot of creatures here. We're seeing four ghost ships, three Dan Dan, two air elementals, two Mahamoti Jins. Uh, two Surrender Pafrits and that one Time Elemental, which I think is really cool that you're playing with that one of Time Elemental. And it could be quite good, right? Time Elemental, a card from Legends, uh, one blue and two. This is a copy from 4th edition. It's an O2 creature, um, two blue and two you can pay, and then you can simply bounce any permanent from the board, which is quite nice, right? So you can just send a creature back uh, if you want to, but also an island or an artifact. I mean, whatever permanent you wish, which I think is pretty cool. It's also a way to kind of protect your own creatures or be just really annoying to your opponent, like keep sending stuff back. So he taps out to play something. You simply keep sending it back. Like, for example, the Nevenerals disc. This is a great way to protect yourself from a disc. Remember, he's playing against my... Uh, disco troll deck today so there's going to be a lot of Nevenerals discs on the board probably and uh, time elemental seems like a very good answer to that um, looking at the rest of the deck we also see two phantasmal terrains and of course those phantasmal terrains they go great with dundon but they're also just great in an old school because phantasmal terrain enchant land for two blue and you can change any land into another basic land of your choice so you can make it a mountain in this case of course you probably want to make it an island so you can attack with your Dan Dance. But, I mean, it's great against Library of Alexandria, uh, Mishra's Factories, Mazes of Ith. I mean, it's just a really good card because there are so many special lands in uh, in old school, you know, that you really need a way to deal with those lands. And Phantasmal Terrain is a way to do just that. So I really like it. Uh, we also see a few artifacts in the deck. A Jam Day Tome, a Felwer Stone, a Soul Ring. So a little bit of ramp and some control and card draw with the Gem Day Tome. And talking about control, we also see an Icy Manipulator. So it's quite an interesting deck, right? It's kind of a mid-range deck where maybe turn two, you want to cast your Dan Dan. If your opponent has islands, like it's perfect. You can keep counter magic up, putting some pressure on with the Dan Dan. If he doesn't, then, you know, you can start keep playing creatures from that point forward. And then later in the game, use your counter magic to protect those creatures. It's quite nice, right? We also see a recall to kind of get back the good spells and then when we're looking at the sideboard we see blue elemental blast so they may come in after the first uh, match right because i'm playing with red today we also see steel artifacts i'm a little bit scared of steel artifacts because he can steal my Nevenerals discs and that's really a vital part of my strategy i also like the fact that he's playing with four ghost ships main right ghost ship uh, a two four flyer from the dark for four mana and for three blue you can regenerate it so it is a really good card against my deck because my strategy is blow things up with uh, with an Evanerals disc. And when you've got a ghost ship, you can simply regenerate your ghost ship so you don't really mind a disc. As a matter of fact, he's playing two discs in his main uh, in his sideboard himself 
to uh, potentially put in against certain decks. So uh, yeah, it's looking uh, it's looking like a good deck, Redmar. I like it. It's it's something that I haven't seen often, like mono blue decks like this. So I, I think it's pretty cool, and I'm curious to see how it's going to do against uh, my deck. Let's take a look at my troll disco brew. And here you see the Troll Disco deck. It's a pretty well-known archetype in old school. What it does is you're playing with four Nefneral's discs. You destroy everything with your discs, but because you are playing with trolls, you can regenerate them because Setch Troll and Often Troll have a regeneration. So you regenerate your creatures and your opponent is losing all the creatures. That is basically at the heart of every Troll Disco deck. And that's exactly what's happening here as well. Now, then you go and try to find, uh, you know, add creatures that go well with the Nef's disc. And then obviously you have... Mishra's Factory, which are brilliant with Nefneral's disc, but you also have Rook Egg, which is just really fun with the disc. Rook Egg, an O3 creature from uh, Arabian Nights, and when it gets uh, destroyed, when it goes to the graveyard, you get a 4-4 Bird token at the beginning of the next end step. So you get a nice 4-4 Flyer in return, right? So you put your Rook X on the table, and then you crack them with your disc, and you get nice 4-4 Flyers in return. And again, your opponent, of course, has just lost all their creatures, and actually everything except for the lands, because of the Nef's disc, right? So that's really the combination that you wanna wanna do with this. Now there are some, you know, neat little tricks in here. For example, I'm playing with an Earthquake, so Earthquake and Rook Egg. Again, it's a really nice synergy, right? If I've got multiple eggs and I can get multiple 4-4 flyers, and at the same time probably kill some creatures of my opponent, deal some damage to my opponent, and get some creatures 4-4 flyers back. So it's just really good bang for your buck. So that's some synergy there with the Earthquake. I'm also playing with one Sacrifice and one Howl from Beyond. I just think that's really funny. So there could be a scenario where I, for example, you know, attack with a creature, then play my Sacrifice on the Rook Egg, Sack in the Egg, so I get four mana. I can use those mana to pump into a potential Howl from Beyond, deal three extra points of damage, and also, again, get a 4-4 Flyer at the beginning of the next end step because I sack my Rook Egg. So that's there, you know, there are some little tricks in here, and I just really enjoy playing with one elves. I also like this one, Anime Dead. I think Anime Dead, it 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 works together really well with the, the, uh, the disc, and it doesn't work together well with the disc. The reason it doesn't work together well with the disc is because, of course, the disc destroys the Anime Dead. The reason is it works very well with the disc is because, hey, you're playing with discs, so you're going to kill a lot of creatures of your opponent that will be in the graveyard, so there's probably a really nice, juicy target to get uh, back with your anime debt. So, you know, that's kind of that that thing. Um, I, I also chose to put two Will of the Wisps in this deck, kind of because of nostalgia, because it's a creature everybody used to play, and now you see it less and less because of, uh, of the mazes of If, I guess. You know, they're just um, a better option usually than your, your Willow, but I really like Willow still, and I think Willow goes together quite well, of course, with the disc, and it's still a really good creature. It basically stops everything, and it's going to buy me some time, you know, to get the disc out and, uh, and to kind of control the board from there. So I think it's a good match. I'm also playing with one gem, Daytome. The main reason for that is that I kind of, I want to have some kind of card draw, you know? If I'm really stuck, I want to have some kind of way out of, uh, out of it. Maybe with my book, you know, I can draw out of it. And of course, I've got a Wheel of Fortune as well, talking about card draw. That's probably the better card to get me out of a sticky situation. And what I like about playing with Black is that I have access to Demonic Tutor. So all those one-offs become a little bit better because you're playing with, with Demonic Tutor. So I really like that. Um, then when we're looking at the sideboard, uh, there, there, there's one card that I just want to highlight because I think it's a really cool card. The card's Immolation. And Immolation is a card from Legends, gives plus two, minus two, an enchant creature. And it's really nice because it works really well on the Rook Egg, right? Because the Rook Egg is an O3. So then with an Immolation on it, it becomes a 2-1 and you can start attacking with it. And your opponent doesn't want to block it because then they get a 4-4 Flyer. So it's really funny. Um, and it's also really good against like Hypnotic Specters, for example. So if my opponent is playing with just annoying, you know, two twos and one ones, I will like board my Immolation in and I can use it both ways. I can use it to kill the creatures of my opponent or I can use it to put it on my Rook Egg. Either way, it kind of feels good. So I'm, I'm, I'm testing this out as a sideboard card. I think the rest of the sideboard is pretty, uh, pretty obvious. Anyway, this is my Troll Disco deck. And now that we've discussed both decks, let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So I'm on the play playing with my Disco Troll deck, starting it with a Badlands. So it's black, it's red. It plays with Often Troll, Set Troll, Will of the Wisp, just a lot of regeneration creatures, also has Rook Eggs in there. And then, of course, I'm playing all, all of these creatures because I have four Nevenoros Discs main. So the deck really revolves around the Discs. And I'm taking on the Deathmar. He's playing a Mono Blue with Dundons. And uh, it's a pretty cool list, lots of creatures. So I'm curious to play against it. And here we see me at uh, turn two playing a Demonic Tutor. Interesting. 
I mean, I wonder what I'm going to look up. Mind twist could be an option. Very yucky, but it could be an option. Um, maybe some some ramp, you know, like a, like a soul ring or perhaps an Evan Earl's disc. It all depends on my hand, of course. Anyway, passing the turn here to Detmar while I'm uh, searching my card and shuffling my library. Detmar has his uh, Mishra's factory, so he could animate it here exactly and attack for two. Put me on 18. There he goes. So putting me on 18, some uh, some damage here. So untapping, taking my card for turn. So I really wonder what I took. Six cards in hand now, I believe, after the draw. There's a Swamp. What are we going to see here? Tapping the Mountain. Untapping it. Okay, tapping the Swamp instead. Changing my mind. Going for, Exactly, going for the Soul Ring. I mean, Soul Ring is quite good because it helps me cast out the Trolls early and keep um, Regeneration Mana open. Ooh, we see a Stone Rain instead. I kind of expected like an Often Troll or Setch Troll here, but a Stone Rain instead taking care of the Factory. And I, it's a bit, you know, in doubt, should you take the Island Artifactory? I think in this case, you're taking the Factory because remember, my strategy is popping the Nevenerals Disc. And of course, the, the Factory is just a great creature against the Nevenerals Disc. So that's probably one of my reasons to go for the uh, factory instead of uh, going for the island here. Redmar playing out his second island, by the way. So he's got counter magic up. The question is, is he going to play something or keep counter magic open? He is going to play something. There is Dundon. So uh, the 4 1 creature that can only attack if the opponent controls islands, which is not the case at the moment. But remember, he is playing with two phantasmal terrains. So, uh, you know, if he finds those, he can uh, give me an island. So four cards in hand for me. Playing a mountain here. Three cards in hand. Tapping a red and a black. So what can I cast here? Oh, there's an earthquake. Interesting choice. Earthquaking for one, killing the Dundon. So it looks like I'm emptying my hand. So I think exactly. Do I have a wheel? Yes, there's the wheel of fortune. I started to see a pattern here, like, I, I I think when I played the Demonic Tutor, I probably already had Wheel of Fortune in hand. That's why I looked up the the Soaring, because it was going to help me kind of dump my hand and then play out this wheel, uh, which is pretty cool. So we're both drawing seven fresh cards. Now remember, I already played out the land, so probably just going to pass a turn to Detmar here, so he can untap with a fresh seven and draw card number eight. That always feels kind of risky. But that's one of the reasons why I like Wheel of Fortune. I think it's a reasonably fair card. It's a strong card, but I mean, it is sorcery speed and you're usually then passing the turn to your opponent, giving him a chance to untap and, you know, kind of take advantage of the new cards first. Anyway, Redmar not really doing that though, just playing a basic island and passing the turn. I mean, I think when wheel get, gets really broken, it's when you combine it with power cards, like, you know, the, the, the fast mana, the black lotus, the moxen, so you can start dumping out your cards in, in your new hand. And of course, with the time walk, like Wheel of Fortune time walk is just so strong. Anyway, um, taking on my, my turn, you're playing an, an often troll, and this is the uh, Timmy Talks version, the protocol sorcerer often troll. Pretty sweet. So often troll, 2-2 two, two creature that you can regenerate for one red. And tapping some more. I'm going to play out another troll. Oh, there's a second Asetch troll hitting the board. Oh, but there's a counterspell by Redmar. And I have to compliment Redmar here for not taking the bait, right? I first played out that often troll trying to see, does he have counter magic? He didn't respond with the counterspell, so I thought the coast is clear. And then I played the Asetch. But Redmar was patient. He waited for that stronger troll to arrive and countered that away. So well done. And let's see if he can find a creature to play out. There's a desert. I mean, the ghost ship would be quite good here, the 2-4 flyer with rege regeneration. It could stop the often troll and the Mishra's factory. But it looks like he's in the tank, maybe considering it, or does he want to keep counter magic open? I'm pretty sure if he has a, uh, a ghost ship, he would play it out. Because now he's looking at four points of damage next turn which is far from ideal for him. Putting down the cards. I think he's just going to pass. Yep, he's just passing the turn. So this is really good news for me because I can now just attack for four and see what happens. You know, maybe he's got a bounce spell, like another unsummon or something. That's fine. 
So six in hand. And just gonna attack her with the uh, the often troll. And there's the unsummon. Yeah, I kind of had this feeling that he had maybe unsummoning head. I believe he also plays boomerang in there. But this is not great for that part. This is not really what you want to do. I think unsummon is, is quite nice to kind of like save your own creature when it gets control magic or uh, when, when there's a creature with a lot of um, enchant creatures on it or when someone goes all in on a creature with giant growth and stuff, then unsummon is quite good or just to, to win the game, you know, just take away a blocker. But in this case, it's not great for, for that part. And it kind of shows that he, he doesn't have a lot going on in his hand, I think. And here we see the often troll already coming back on the board. And of course, I've played that Nevernurl's disc. No counter magic from Redmar on the disc. I mean, that's understandable because the disc is not that scary yet, but it's just super annoying to play against a player with an untapped disc. There's another island by Redmar and just a pass. So he's really giving me the space here to take over the game. Redmar currently on 19, it seems. Not quite sure where he took that one damage from, to be honest, but maybe I missed something. Anyway, playing a Swamp here. Tapping four. Okay, what are we going to get? Um, Jam Day Tome, perhaps? I don't think another disc. That would make no sense at all. Oh, there's a Rook Egg. Yeah, that makes sense. Now the disc makes sense as well. So Rook Egg, an O3 creature from Arabian Nights. And when it dies, you get a 4-4 flying Rook token at the end of the turn. So, of course, that works really well with the Nevenerals disc. Animating the factory now, uh, swinging in for 4. There's a Boomerang. Okay, so more bounce spells from Redmar. Boomeranging uh, boomeranging the uh, Mistress factory. And I think Boomeranging the factory is quite nice because I already have my land drop for turns. So I have to wait a whole turn cycle. Let's see if Redmar can now, you know, find something. I mean, it is time for him to take some action. But look at that, just passing the turn. So he must be very unfortunate. Perhaps he's land flooded. There's the factory again. I mean, I can now just swing in again for two. I mean, there's not that much pressure, but still it's something. Tapping three. Okay, there's more pressure. There's a Setch Troll. Remember, it is a 3-3 three, three now because I control Swamps. Attacking with the often, putting Redmar here on 15. Four cards in hand, passing the turn. So one of the options I have now is on end step, popping the disc, regenerating my own creatures and getting that 4-4 flyer. Ooh, let's take a look. Redmar here playing a Brain Geyser. Wow, a Brain Geyser for five. So this could be a game changer. This is huge. He's going to go back up, I believe, to eight cards in hand now. And hopefully for Redmar, he can find something useful. Discarding an island here and passing the turn. So seven in hand for Detmar. So next turn, hopefully he can do something. Look at this on end step. Playing a lightning bolt on my own egg. So I get that 4-4. Four, four. So it looks like I don't want to pop the disc, right? Also knowing that, you know, Detmar has this whole handful of cards. So I just want to keep the disc as kind of my my safety you know, my, 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 my security, you know, when, when he starts playing out really scary, scary things, I still have that disc that I can pop. So instead going for the lightning bolt play, which is quite good because now I can swing in for nine, 11 points of damage. Wow, this is huge. So maybe the brain guys are came too late for that one. He's going to take 11 points. Look at that life total going down there. All the way down to four. And there's another Rook Egg hitting the board. I mean, it's looking so bad for Edmar. There's just a factory, though. I mean, can he do anything? There's a Soul Ring. So he's emptying his hand. At least the factory is a blocker of some sort. Okay, there's a Ghost Ship. And also he has... Okay, so he could play that on the Nevenerals disc, but okay, he's going to play that on the bird token, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, no, we're, we're, we're tidying up already. We're packing up. Redmar is saying, this is all I have. This is all I can do. And then you win the game. And and that you're right. You're right. Um, but I would have loved to untap, you know, and kind of, you know, do, do my attack. But uh, <laughs> I get it. 
I get it. The deck wasn't really going for Deathmire here in game one. The good news though is we are going to go to game two and uh, that's after sideboarding. So maybe then Deathmire uh, has a better, better uh, draws, I, I say, because I think you were very unlucky, Deathmire, with the cards that you found. So uh, onwards to game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Deathmire on the play. Let's see what he can do. Maybe he can put some pressure on. There's an island passing the turn. My turn one here, a Batlands probably is going to pass. Don't have a lot of action. Will of the Wisp is kind of my, uh, and end Sol Ring, kind of my turn one place. There we see a factory by Redmar. I'm passing the turn back to me. Let's see what I can do. There's another land, Basic Mountain, passing the turn. So we're both just building up at the moment. Two islands here for Redmar. Tapping both of those. There's a Dundon again. And there's a pass. So again, he'll need to find a Phantasmal Terrain. Give me an island. Maybe turn my Batlands into an island. That would be quite nice for him. There's a factory. So we now both have a Mishra's factory on the board. And there's a pass. No set troll. No often troll. No nothing from me. Just a pass. Ooh, tapping four. There's an Icy Manipulator. That is quite useful. So I see a card for four, an artifact, and one in tap. And then you can tap down target land, artifact, or creature. It's a very handy artifact, very annoying to play against, but great to play with, in my opinion. Okay, there's a Demonic Tutor. I wonder what I'm going to pick up. Am I going to pick up that Soul Ring again? I mean, that went really, really well the first time. Or am I now going to go for that? Uh, oh, look at this. Going to go for Shatter, Shattering that uh, Icy Manipulator. Yeah, like Icy is just a very strong card. Whenever I see it, I try to destroy it on site. So going for that, there's another island here by Edefmar. Let's see if he can play anything out for five. I mean, he is playing with air elementals as well in the deck. Look at that animating, attacking for two, kind of a free attack that I'm tapped out. So going to drop to 18 here, it seems. Let's see what he can do next. There's not a follow-up play, just a past turn, it seems. So I'm, I, I feel I'm quite lucky here that it's not... Because there are quite a lot of creatures in the deck of Edmar, but doesn't seem to really find the right ones. Like a ghost ship is, is very good against my deck. Tapping four here. What am I going to do for four? Will we see a Neverneural Disc? Oh, now there's the Mind Twist. Ah, oh, yucky. So Mind Twisting him here for uh, for three. That is unfortunate. Only going to keep one card. I mean, this is already looking really tough for Deathmark to kind of bounce back from this mind twist. Now, remember, he does have Ancestral Recall. He does have Brain Geyser, you know, so it's 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 not over, but it's difficult. So he can keep card number two, I guess, and he's got to discard the rest. So there's a Desert. Ooh, Blue Elemental Blast, really good against me. And another Desert. Actually, not too bad for Deathmark. I mean, you don't want to lose three cards, don't get me wrong, but it could be worse, and at least he's got another attack in with the factory. And I mean, losing two deserts, and I mean, the blue blast kind of hurts, but the two deserts, not too bad. I wonder what he's going to do. Animating first, of course, attacking, so going to put me on 16, that's kind of expected, but is he going to play anything out second main? Yep. Surrender Pafrit, hitting the board. This is a beautiful wide-bordered Italian version, I think, probably. Because it has the original art. So really nice to see that card. I really like that wide-bordered version. There's a Terror coming in from the sideboard. Taking care of business. And of course, Terror is also a great card against the Ghost Ships. That's probably why I boarded it in after Game 1. Passing the turn here. And here you can kind of see the functionality of Dundon as well, right? Despite the fact that he cannot attack with it, he can still block with it. And I don't want to trade it for my factory, so I don't attack with my factory in the previous turn. Now we see Deathmar here playing another Surrender, but oh, that is, again, kind of unfortunate here. Finding the Terror on end step. Could have, of course, waited for Deathmar to go into upkeep, take the damage, but I don't want to take the risk that maybe he's got counter magic up. I just want to get rid of it as fast as I can. I mean, I've got this card advantage going after the Mind Twist, so I'm going to try to take full advantage of it. Six cards in hand at the moment. 
Tapping a red. Ooh, there's a lightning bolt on the Dundon. Okay. That is, that is very surprising. I wonder, do I have, again, a uh, Wheel of Fortune in hand attacking for two now? I mean, Vepper can animate block, but he kind of feels that if he does, he's probably going to lose the uh, Mishra's Factory to perhaps another Bolt. So he chooses not to. There's a Jam Day Tome. Okay, that's kind of nice. That can get him back into it after that Mind Twist. Untapping now again. I wonder what I'm going to do. Like, why did I play out that bolt? Again, animating, attacking. Going to put the Depmar on 16. Going to tap three. Oh, I was expecting a wheel, but um, I'm actually quite happy seeing that it's a stone rain instead. And again, you know, in this case, not stone raining the factory, really kind of signaling to the that I've got another bolt in hand. Ooh, he's going to draw a card with the Jam Day Tome, it seems. Didn't have a land drop yet, so looking for lands, finding a land in the form of an island. One card in hand for Deathmar, but I mean, so far it's not looking too bad for him, because I only have that one factory to attack with. I mean, it's it's good, it's, it's, it's pressure, but could be worse for Deathmar. He's going to go to 14, passing the turns, he's going to untap. There's another island. Which is not too bad, all those islands, because of those Jam Day Tomes. Like, he needs lands. Attacking me here for two. That is funny. And there we see that bolt. And now does the Deathmar have a counter spell? He's got two cards in hand, it seems. Oh, there we see a blue elemental blast. So he's going to save it. Well done here. So he's going to... Oh, another bolt. Wow, I had a lot of bolts in hand. That is bolt number three. So I wonder if that last card now is a Wheel of Fortune. And if it is a Wheel of Fortune, should I actually play it? You know, I mean, do I want to give Redmar like a new hand? I mean, it is fun to do. Tacking for two here. Going to put him on 12. Tapping three. Oh, there's a Setch Troll. I mean, maybe I don't even have a wheel. Maybe I just wanted to play the, the, the Lightning Bolt to the face. Ooh, there's a Control Magic. That's quite good. Taking my Setch. Now, the good thing for me, though, is that the Setch has turned into a 2-2. Two -two because uh, Deathmar has no islands, and of course, he doesn't have Black Mana to regenerate it. Let's see what I'm going to do. Do I have a way... I mean, it's really hard for my color combination to actually deal with enchantments like Control Magic. Okay, there's an off Troll. I could consider attacking, offering the trade for the factory. Choosing not to, though, just passing the turn. One card in hand still. Ooh, there's a maze. That's quite good. So Deathmar is kind of stabilizing, which is really good for him with the Gem Day Tome. I, I, I feel like I should have just attacked previous turn. Kind of take the trade. Tapping one. Oh, this is good. Red Elemental Blast. That is really good. Kind of unfortunate for Deathmar here because that Control Magic was looking really, really nice. And now, of course, I'm attacking, animating the factory, attacking for four. Probably going to send back the Often Troll. So it's going to take two points of damage, going to drop to ten. One card in hand still passing the turn. The Deathmar also having one card in hand. And I mean, that, that GMD Tome is doing a lot of work for him. The problem is that he keeps taking damage. He just stabilized with the Control Magic, but then there was that Red Elemental Blast, which is, of course, a great sideboard card for me because Redmar's deck is completely blue. So I have a lot of targets. Untapping now. So I can attack here with everything. I mean, there's a bit of a risk as Redmar does have that factory. It's going to tap three. Are we going to see a Psionic Blast? And on what are you going to play the Psionic Blast? There is a Psionic Blast here. Probably going to play it on the Mishra's Factory, right? But there's a Red Elemental Blast kind of saving me from the Psionic Blast. So he's on 10. Is he going to use his Mishra's Factory? That's the question here. Of course, he can use the Mace. Send back the set Troll, then it would still take 4, go to 6. 
So sending back the setch, I assume exactly. And now the question is, is he gonna block with the factory? I believe it still has summoning sickness, right? So meaning he cannot pump itself. So is he gonna take the four? He would drop to six and he would be able to still draw a card from the gem day tomes. I kind of understand that he's in a bit of a pickle here. So animating. So it's now a two, two. Probably gonna block my factory. He does want to pump it up. I think it's still at summoning sickness, but maybe I'm wrong. Looks like we're discussing it right now. I'm digging in my memory, but this, this game is a long time ago. Yeah, so he couldn't pump it, so it's summoning sickness, so he is blocking. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good trade. You can do that. I think the biggest downside here for Debmar is that he's still taking damage and he's not drawing that extra card. That's a bit, uh, a bit bad for him. He's again under pressure, right? Like, but he at least took care of one of the creatures. Okay, there's, there's at least another blocker on the board, but again, like a ghost ship would be really nice here. Ghost ship and maze, and he's kind of got it, got his defenses up and then he can just continue drawing cards. And of course, I have just to have to put pressure on as long as I can. He's asking about, you know, my, my graveyard, how many lightning bolts I've got in there, how many shatters. I believe there's one shatter in there and three lightning bolts. He's going to send back the Satch, take the damage. That makes sense because, again, you know, the, the factory still has summoning sickness. I'm going to tap four here. There's a Nevenrolls disc. Okay, I mean, the disc is good because it can blow up the Book of Redmar, which is something I definitely want to do. And I can regenerate my own creatures, of course. So it's basically a very expensive way to get rid of one Jam Tome, but you got to do what you got to do. Two cards in hand here uh, for Detmar. Going to draw another card. Three cards in hand. Wow, another maze. Okay. <laughs> oh, he slammed that down so quickly. Like, oh, maze, I got it. Oh, he's stabilizing here on six. Oh, man. This is tough for me. I'm not playing any bad moons in this deck. Okay, there's a Shatter, so I'm going to Shatter the Book. Only one card in hand. Like, it makes no sense for me to attack here with those two mazes, so just going to pass the turn. Redmar tapping four. Okay, there's a Ghost Ship. That's actually really good. Also, he's got three blue open to regenerate it, so... Yeah, this is bad, right? I mean, I can use my disc, but he can still regenerate it, and... He can now attack through the air. Remember, my trolls don't fly, of course. And Ghost Ship is a flying 2-4 creature from the dark. I mean, I'm still really high up in life, but this is a problem. So dropping here to 14. Those mazes are really doing it here for, uh, for Deathmar. And of course, the mazes, they're not dealt with by my Nevenrolls disc. So I really need my Stone Rains. I don't have that many. Oh, look at this. That is awesome here for Detmar. There's an air elemental. There's the attack. It's going to put me on 12. Drawing a card for turn. Of course, I can use the disc next turn to kill the air elemental. And then, of course, Detmar will have to use three blue to regenerate the ghost ship, meaning when it regenerates, it taps, so then he can no longer attack with it. So at least I don't take any damage that turn, and I get rid of a creature on the side of Detmar. But, um, yeah, he's the one in control at the moment. He's the aggressor. So I guess he uh, wants to go into combat now. It's going to turn it sideways and then I'm probably going to pop the disc exactly. I'm going to pop the disc here and I'm going to regenerate both of my trolls. And then of course Zetmar is going to regenerate his ghost ship, but it does mean I don't take any damage. I'm still on 12. But I need something quick. Tapping three, not a stone rain, another sedge. Okay, so there's at least some pressure. So next turn I could attack with all three. Kind of put Redmar in, an, uh, in a difficult position. Although he could just um, block the often troll and send back the two sedges. Oh, ho, 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 ma, multi chin. And what a comeback this is by Redmar. Maha multi chin swinging through the air. He's going to put me on 10. I mean, I got to say, I love this, man. I love seeing these creatures kind of shine, having their moment. I mean, obviously, Detmar is not there yet. I'm still on 10. He needs two more turns. 
Okay, there's an Evan Earl's disc, so maybe this disc will buy me another turn. I mean, that mark can still swing in for seven, put me on three. But at least it's something, it could be worse. So it's going to put me on three, then I'm probably going to use the disc, not taking any damage that turn. So potentially I have like a two turn window. First going to take the damage, you're going to drop to three. And now I'm going to untap. Going to draw for turn three cards in hand. I mean, I just don't have a lot of flyers in this deck. That ghost ship is like ideal, like the perfect card against this uh, troll disco. Of course, he's going to swing in now for seven. So I've got to pop the disc in response. And then I've got to regenerate my trolls. So my multi Jin is dead and I don't take any damage because the uh, ghost ship has to tap itself after regenerating. But I mean, I'm just buying time. I'm not really changing anything here. I need a terror for the ghost ship. That would be ideal. So I'm in the tank here, three cards in hand, I believe, trying to find a way out of this. Tapping two black, tapping two red. Another disc, yeah, I mean, I'm just playing all the discs out, but they're basically like a very expensive fog. So next turn, that mark can attack me for two. Oh, look at this, just attacking with everything. This is desperation mode, yeah, and of course we're gonna see the double, the double maze. And he is gonna, you know, block your pump itself on the often. So I've got to regenerate the often. Yeah, this is really just desperation mode. I mean, what else can I do? You know, trying to to maybe see if Redmar makes a mistake or panics when I attack with my three uh, trolls. Of course, he doesn't. But you never know. You know, sometimes opponents do weird stuff when you just attack out of out of nowhere like that. There's a Don Don. I still hope, Edmar, that somewhere in this matchup we have this moment where you play Phantasmal Terrain and then attack with your Dundon. That would be quite glorious. I guess you're going to swing in now for two with the Ghost Ship. Put me on one. That's exactly what he does. So he's going to put me on one. He's on six. I'm on one. I mean, that Never Rolls Disc is going to buy me one more turn. But that's all. Again, attacking here with everything. That's kind of funny. Sending back again to two sedges. And he's actually going to block the uh, Dundon here on the uh, often troll. Why not? Because he also knows that next turn I'm going to pop the disc anyway. Drawing a card for turn. I mean, he just has to be patient. Just one more turn. Or he's got a side blast. He can win it on the spot. There's the attack. So I have to use the disc. Again, regenerating the trolls. And, oh, there's another ghost ship after that. Wow. I mean, that is it, it, it. That makes such a difference. If he can find those ghost ships or if he can't, you know. Cannot find any extra terrorists against those ships. So probably just going to die. Okay, there's one at least. I'm on one. I mean, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to, to hang on. I hope you guys appreciate that. But um, yeah, it's all in vain, it seems. Anyway, uh, attacking again with the trolls. But those mazes of if are just absolutely killer here for me. Okay, there's a howl from beyond. Look at that. <laughs> oh, and also with that howl, I just needed one troll to come through at a certain point in the match. And I would have won with that Howl from Beyond, by the way. But actually, Redmar, I'm happy, man, because you got back. This was a very swingy game, too. I really enjoyed it. And it also means it's 1-1. One, one. So we are going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. The big game decider. So at least I'm on the play, which is good, I guess. Starting with the Swamp, passing the turn. And uh, that was a really nice victory by uh, Redmar there in that game, too. For the longest of times, I thought I was really uh, in the uh, winning position. Redmar playing another island, passing the turn, by the way, turn three for me here. And we're just dropping lands, passing turn. 
So I'm not really finding uh, anything useful, it seems. So there's a Mishra's factory for some pressure. Tapping four. Okay, there is a uh, Rook egg. The O3 from Arabian Nights. The one we saw in game one as well. Didn't see it in game two. Remember, if the Rook egg dies, I get a 4-4 flying bird token in my end step. So that's pretty sweet. No counter here from Adepmar, so it's going to take his turn as well. There's again a maze. Wow. Those mazes, they were such a pain in that, uh, in that game too. So untapping again, taking my turn. Let's see what I can do. Tapping four. Do I have an Evan Earl's disc? Untapping again. Looks like I'm changing my mind. Passing the turn here. Interesting. So not doing anything. Probably worried about the potential counter spell by Detmar. So maybe I'm just going to wait until he taps out to play something. But okay, does tap two here for a Dan Dan. And doesn't play out a double blue. So now I kind of have an opening here. Don't have to worry about counter magic. There is a bad lands. So six mana on the board. That's quite a lot of land. Tapping four now. Okay, there's the Nevenerals disc. So this disc is quite nice, right? Like I can pop it, destroy the Dundon on the side of Deathmar, destroy my own egg, getting a 4-4 four, four flyer. So that's some, uh, some good value for me. Now remember, Deathmar does have steel artifacts in the sideboard, so I wonder if he boarded those in. I mean, it would be pretty cool for him. Well, not for me, but I guess for the match, it would be pretty cool if you could find an island now, play steel artifact on my Nevenerals disc. That would be pretty disastrous. For now, it looks like he's in the tank. Oh, he's got a discard. That is so unfortunate. In a decisive game three, you just don't want this to happen. You know, you don't want to see your opponent discarding. You know, you want to just play a play a third game fair and square, but it's part of Magic Gear has to discard. There's another egg, but there's the counter spell this time. On the Rook Egg. I mean, that would have been brutal, you know, having double Rook Egg on board and uh, then popping the, the Nevenerals disc. But still, that one Egg is uh, problematic as well. So using the disc here on end step of Adepmar, destroying the Dandan, and of course destroying my own Rook Egg, get, getting a 4-4 Bird token in that end step. So that's quite nice. And the next turn, of course, I can animate... My, uh, my factory and attack with it. There's the 4-4 flying uh, token. Untap, upkeep, draw. Of course, Deathmar still has that maze, so I need to try to find uh, a stone rain, but at least I can deal some damage here by also attacking with the factories. Probably going to send back my 4-4 flyer. That's exactly what happens. He's going to take uh, two points, going to drop to 18. Or not. Ooh, he's going to do something else. Gonna play a Psionic Blast, okay, on the bird. There's a red Elemental Blast, though. So now he's gonna take four points of damage. So obviously it's easy to look back at these games and criticize, but obviously the better play here would have been to first play out that Psionic Blast to see what I do and then use your maze after. Again, it's easy in hindsight when you're looking at this game. So three cards in my hand. And is Redmar just going to pass again? He's very unfortunate here in the third game, not finding any lands. I mean, I'm not drawing great either, but I mean, the, 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 the fact that he's not really doing anything is, of course, giving me the opportunities here. Attacking again, so he's going to send back the 4-4 four, four flyer, I guess, this time. Ooh, there's a red elemental blast. Or sorry, a blue elemental blast, of course. And uh, we're reading it now. Is it a red card? It is. And then I'm playing a red elemental blast to protect it. Oh, there's a spell blast. <laughs> oh, you got to love this. And the rook token is gone. This is sweet. The battle for the rook token only on Timmy Talks. Love it, love it, love it. Game number three here. And that was quite nice. And okay, there's a creature for Redmar. Now it's getting problematic for me. 3-4 Flyer. 
And I'm not doing anything passing the turn. Okay, is this again one of those games where I started as the aggressor, but Edmar takes over? Just like in game number two, there's a ghost ship here. There's the attack for three. There's a terror. Okay, that's something. I wonder if... Okay, I've got another terror. Okay, so two terrors in hand. That's quite nice. Cleaning up the board here. For a moment there, I thought, couldn't I uh, have played that terror better on the uh, ghost ship? But I had two, so... Uh, now I understand. Oh, there's a stone rain, and now I can attack for two. Wow, I mean, this, this, these are some great cards for me. Double Terror and Stone Rain really clearing the board, and Redmar only has four basic islands left. That is tough for him. So I'm really lucky here finding those uh, sideboard cards. Oh, there's a ghost ship, though. That is sweet. That is good for Redmar. Tapping two reds. Double Bolt, wow, going for it. I mean, I have to do it, right? He didn't have any regeneration mana open, but it is a two for one. And I think if you're at that point, you're like, okay, it's not great, but it's not too bad either. Another option for me could have been to keep the Bolts in hand to potentially play them on the life total of Edmar since he is on 11. He would have dropped to five, but I think this is better because now I can keep attacking here. Ooh, there's a Psionic Blast though. And I'm not finding any trolls, right? Which is quite weird, because I'm playing with eight of them, but not really finding anything. So no way to put any more pressure on board, passing the turn to Adepmar. This is quite an interesting game three. There's an Icy Manipulator. So, I mean, Adepmar does have more cards in hand than me, so that's a big advantage. Finding a Swamp here, that's not great. Passing the turn. Adepmar on nine, I'm on 20. Let's see what he's going to do. Can he find anything to put pressure on the board? I mean, he's already lost quite a lot of creatures. Yeah, passing the turn here. So I'm going to go to two cards in hand. I mean, that's the good news for me that he cannot find another Surrendip or, you know, another Ghost Ship. Perhaps he's got an Air Elemental Mamoti in hand, just needs some extra lands to cast them. Two cards in hand for me. Game number three. One, one. Looks like I'm just going to pass the turn. I mean, this is a pretty tense game. Really wondering what uh, Redmar has in hand there. Five cards, I believe. That's quite a lot. Actually, six. Wow, passing the turn. What I think he's got in hand is just a lot of counter magic. Look at that tapping. Ooh, going for a mind twist. There's the counter spell, though. Yeah, that was as to be expected. But, I mean, from my perspective, the worst case scenario, I'm trading a mind twist for a counter spell, which is not too bad. Of course, I could have waited, perhaps. For him to tap out. That's what he does now playing the ghost ship. Maybe that would have been better. But it is what it is. Two cards in hand. Tapping five. What do I have? Okay, there's a fireball. Yeah, again going on the uh, on the ghost ship. So, I mean, think about it. If I would have played those two lightning bolts and the ghost ship on the life total of Adapmar, he would have died already. There's a Shatter also taking care of the Icy. So I've got a lot of answers in my deck. I'm killing a lot of stuff with Edmar, but I'm not killing him. That's the problem. He's still on 9. There's a Mishra's Factory. Ooh, and now he's got 5. I wonder if he's got Air Elemental. I guess he doesn't because he's passing the turn. Like, Air Elemental would have been really good here. Tapping four, what do I have? Okay, there's a Nevenerals disc. There's a counter spell on the disc. So lots of counter magic in hand by Depmar. Ooh, and then I'm playing a Wheel of Fortune. Oh, another counter spell. That is unfortunate. I really needed this wheel to resolve. This could be a changing moment in the game. My hand's empty. This is really tough. I kind of hoped after that one counterspell that he didn't have a follow-up counterspell. Oh, there's a Mahamoti. Oh, 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 Papa Moti. Oh, no, this is so bad. Am I going to die in four turns? 
I need red elemental blast. Okay, there's an off control, which is not well, it's not great either, because Redmar can block on his Mishra's factory, can pump it so it doesn't die. I want to say it's not too bad because I can put some pressure on the life total of Redmar, but it's not true. Taking five. Wow, man. Fifteen. Taking an extra turn. There's the there are the power cards that we missed actually in the first two games, but now he's finding his power. Look at this. He's going to untap. He's going to swing in for five again. He's going to put me on 10. So my life total is halved. Wow, this is going so fast. There's a soul ring. Great with the gem day tome. Tapping five. Are we going to see another flyer? Wow, there's an air elemental. I'm toast. I'm so done. The only thing that can save me here, I guess, is if I top deck uh, a disc. Put the disc out. Do I have a disc? Question mark? No, I've got another troll. It's the cool one. It's the Timmy troll, but... Ay, 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 ay. This is unfortunate. He's going to swing in for nine here. He's going to put me on one. He's going to give me one more turn. Is there a way for me to, to win this? I mean... Uh, I mean, in hindsight, if I would have played those... Burn spells on the life total of Redmar, but then again, I mean, at the time when I made the decisions, they made sense. I don't think I really made a mistake there. This is just part of the game, attacking with both. So he's going to block once. He's going to take two more points, going to go to seven. One card in hand. There's another troll. Okay. Oh, man. No cards in hand. Go and untap Redmar. Kill me with your beautiful blue flyers. Fly over me, fly me to the moon. Yep, dead, absolutely dead. Well done, Edmar. I mean, a thumbs up here. Um, very, very good. Very interesting games. Again, I really enjoyed this game. It reminded me a little bit of game number two, where I started off really strong, had a lot of answers, got you quite low on life total, but then you still stabilized and your strong flyers got you the victory. So really nice to see uh, your deck here. Dun Dun Power, here we see it on the screen. And uh, thank you, Devmar, for this match. It was a lot of fun. And also, of course, thank you for uh, supporting Timmy Talks as a patron. And if you want to become a patron as well, and maybe even play a game against me, check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the info. And before you go, please take a moment to also subscribe to the channel. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and now that you've done that, thank you so much. Welcome as a sub here to Timmy Talks. If you're already a sub, Thank you for your support. Please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then now that that's all out of the way, it is time for the most exciting part of the video. What is that, you may wonder? It is the amazing, fantastic Unscroll. Let's go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, somba kazee.